Hello, this is the specimen of the right lung showing the upper lobe, the middle lobe, and the lower lobe. Now you can see that the lower lobe is obviously abnormal, and let's zoom closer in using the magnifier. If we look at the cut surface of the lung parenchyma, we can see that it looks a lot more solid. It is pale tan in color compared to the adjacent normal lung parenchyma, which is a little bit more porous or spongy looking. This is the classical appearance of loba pneumonia. Now this is in contrast to bronchopneumonia, where you see a more patchy appearance of consolidation. Loba pneumonia is often caused by organisms such as Streptococcus pneumoniae or Klebsiella. Let's contrast this with bronchopneumonia. On this left side, I have the cut surface of a lung specimen which is involved by bronchopneumonia. And let's have a look at this. Uh, we can see here that there is some patchy consolidation. These are the paler areas seen with a bit more normal looking lung parenchyma in between this. And let's just have a direct comparison with the loba pneumonia where the entire area looks solidified. On microscopy in bronchopneumonia, we would see neutrophils, suppurative inflammation within the bronchi and the bronchiolar spaces and spilling out into the adjacent alveolar spaces. Bronchopneumonia is often seen in elderly and debilitated patients and can be caused by organisms such as Staph aureus or E. coli. It can be seen in uh, hospital-acquired pneumonia, for example. And actually, the same organism can cause different patterns of pneumonia. Now, in loba pneumonia, we would also see acute separative inflammation, but this would pretty much be diffusely present within the lung parenchyma. So, just to compare and contrast the appearances of loba pneumonia uh, compared to bronchopneumonia, this bronchopneumonia is more common and is characterized by more patchy involvement of the lung parenchyma.